Hello, friends, and welcome to a, a very different Q&A session for me because I am not in my house, and my house has sort of become, uh, what would you say, a uh, an alternate photo studio for me, an editing studio. However, today I am in a different place. I am in my car, actually in front of a Starbucks because I was hoping to get Wi-Fi. However, they have turned off their Wi-Fi, so I'm on data. In any case, um, today was the, uh, we'll just say the the bi-monthly Costco run. And because it's pouring rain and freezing cold out, I had to wait outside and get soaked. And uh, that's why I only go to Costco uh, every two weeks. Anyway, I didn't get home in time because of the huge lineups. And that's why I'm doing this Q&A session from my car. And... Uh, We'll see how it goes. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay with uh, with these earbuds. And even though like I'm on um, mobile data, so I don't even know how strong that is. I have three bars out of four. So hopefully you guys can hear me and hopefully the the signal, the uh, it looks okay and not all pixelated. So um, feel free to ask any questions if anyone's new, question and answer time. And I probably, and I, in fact, I know I won't be able to go for the, the full time. I usually go for an hour how, because in this instance, I'm burning a lot of data uh, because the uh, I'm outside of Starbucks. Like I said, I was hoping to get their Wi-Fi through their wall and through my car, but it's not working out. So, And my data plan in Canada is not very good. Canadians get really uh, ripped off with regards to data. Mario, good to see you. I'm going to give you a wave. Kim at Winsmore. Bernice, let me know uh, what country you guys are from. That'd be fun. I just saw your post. Can't wait to do it, Alessandra. Excellent. Travel Clicks, good to see you. Penelope Positive. That's very. It's a great name, by the way. Drashti, the audio and video are perfect. Well, it's good to know. Uh, I think this is my first live from inside my car. And interestingly, it's something that if it works out and looks like it is working out, then I can I can continue these uh, these Q and A sessions after the COVID lockdown is done because really I can do them anywhere and as long as I just keep them um, a little bit shorter based on sucking up uh, very expensive data I'll be all set. Also my um, I don't have a tripod and I'm resting my phone on my steering wheel and if this flops if this uh, falls down on the ground it's because it's precariously balanced. Okay. Oh, I, Penny, good to see you. Penelope Positive. Okay. I didn't know you changed the, your Instagram name. Very good to see you, Penny. Okay. Andrea, good to see you. Kim. How are you, Mark? I'm really good. And a number of reasons why is because our province, New Brunswick, which is on the east coast of Canada, has um is uh, actually just yesterday we have a lot more freedom with regards to covid lockdown because we don't have any cases um no deaths and we're doing really well with getting over the covid crisis so now we not only can we i i visit my brother and his family but now we can have um at a safe distance uh social scenarios outdoors for up to 10 people so that would be like a picnic or something where we still keep our two meter distance but we can uh, be with groups so that really helps uh, everyone with their their mental states certainly okay krishna yes penny good to see you gjxlo good to see you Alessandra asked, how was the photo shoot yesterday? It went really great. Thank you, Alessandra. And it was really good because it was a photo shoot on um, a large company um, getting a protocol set up for social distancing within their very large business. And they have many different locations. So I actually enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun and it was for a good cause. My uh, phone is slipping, and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna put a little tri mini tripod in my car just in case I have to do this again inside a car. Sanjeev, welcome. And uh, and also, 
what I tend to do is put in uh, questions that I get that I don't get to answer from uh, previous days. Oh, regards from Colombia. Excellent. Anna Maro Dello. Good to see you. And if anyone's new, put your questions down below. This is going to be a shorter one because, like I said, I'm running on data and it's just going to eat up my monthly plan, which is very expensive. Amarimi, hello, everyone. Um, with regards to uh, yesterday, I don't have them written down. There's some questions that I didn't get to. However, um, a lot of them were, if I recall, one of them was on a good portrait lens. Okay, hold, let me let me get back to that. First, uh, let me read Travel Clicks. Hey, Mark, I have a question regarding street photography. If I use aperture priority with auto ISO, in a crop sensor camera, if I use a 24 millimeter, what should be my aperture and focus mode for best results? Yes. So I I do the same thing. I use a 24 millimeter for my street photography. It's actually, to be honest, it's a 23 millimeter, but that's only because Fuji decided to do 23 instead of 24, same thing. And your lens is the equivalent of what we call a 35 millimeter prime lens, which is great. In fact, that's the perfect lens selection for street photography. So that's great. What I would do is I would go to auto ISO. I would use aperture priority and I would use an F 5.6. Now, the reason why usually I suggest to people to go a little bit lower to F 4.5 or even F 2.8. However, uh, if, if it's day and if it's a lot of brightness, go to f5.6. And I use that as a default aperture. And the reason being, it's a good middle ground between being able to um, really quickly capture scenes in shadow areas and highlight areas. Maybe, for example, you're walking down the street and there's this, this really great um, scene happening, but it's in the shadowy side of the street. So you capture that. And uh, the 5.6 will give you a certain amount of depth of field so that if you miss your focus your subject may still be sharp. Now, when you get into the, the, the evening hours, or in fact, early morning, then I'm gonna get you to switch to your lowest, uh, um, your lowest f-stop possible. So for your lens, that might be an f2 or an f1.8, and I don't know what lens you're using, to be honest. And the reason being is that that's gonna give you, allow for, with auto ISO, a fast enough shutter speed for you to get the shot without it being blurry, okay? So daytime, f5.6, in the evening or low light, f1.8 or whatever the lowest f-stop number is. Okay, awesome question. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Should I be using AFS or AFC for street photography? Yes, AFS, definitely. Don't use AFC. So if anyone wants to know what that is, um, an AFS is autofocus single. So that's the single single uh, place to focus and AFC is continuous. And that would be for sports photography. That would be for uh, any type of photography where there's a lot of movement and quick motion. But because people in a street, photographer scena street photography scenario are not moving fast enough, you're just gonna get really uh, frustrated because focusing is not as easy when you're doing autofocus continuous. So AFS, definitely. And I can't really see any reason why you'd ever use AFC, to be honest, in street photography. Okay, Yusuf, good to see you. Matt, welcome. Yurin, welcome. Yurin, Kamrang. Hello, Mark. How are you? Are you having a good day? Yes. <laughs> I just got through that, uh, you know, this is a first world problem, I will say, but that painful outdoor lineup at Costco and it's pouring rain and extremely cold. That's why I'm wearing three jackets, by the way, because I had to be outside uh, waiting to get into Costco and it took a half an hour and I'm soaked. Uh, Nehemiah, Mark, hello, good to see you. Steve Ock, great to see you. Um, what was that, that question I was talking about? Uh, oh, it escapes me. I had a whole bunch from yesterday that, that I didn't get to and I apologize. And, I was talking about it right before I answered one of those questions. Anyway, um, I didn't write them down, so I'm going to go off the cuff. And I think it, oh yeah, portraiture, exactly. So people ask, or this person asked, and I forget who it was, a good lens for portraiture. 
and they're dealing with headshots in a studio environment. So usually what you can do is just use your normal 70 to 200 zoom lens. However, if you are looking for a more budget option and something that allows for a lot better depth of field, i.e. a good blur that you can use outdoors for weddings or portraits, I find that a really good budget option is your 85 millimeter f1.8. Now this would be good for Canon and Nikon and Sony and Fuji have a similar one, but it may not be exactly 85 millimeter, but it's very similar. And the reason why this is good is it works both for a crop sensor camera, which would be an APS-C size camera, for example. Um, most DSLRs are mirrorless that are prosumer or beginner versions are APS-C. So an, an 85 millimeter using that camera would actually be what, um, 125 or 130 millimeter. And this is actually a really good focal length for headshots, really good. And if you have a full frame camera, then that 85 is still truly excellent for any type of um, upper body shots for people, very good for portraiture. So if I had to, um, let's just say I had to go to a deserted island with only one lens, and I was a portrait photographer, I would probably choose the 85 millimeter f1.8. If I was a street photographer, and just so happened that that deserted island had streets on it with no people, it's not gonna do any good, but I would choose the 35 millimeter. Now that, was, that would be the full frame. So that would be a 23 or 24 millimeter for APS-C. Now, if anyone's watching this and they're saying, what the heck is he talking about all these different millimeter lengths? It is confusing, I understand, and it's it's extra confusing because APS-C size cameras have a different focal length number and compared to full frame, and it's a little bit of a mess when you're first starting out. I do explain this. This isn't meant to be a sales pitch, but I do explain the differences in the course uh, Digital Camera Mastery, which you can find at my website, markhemmings.com. But if anyone has any lingering uh, questions about APS-C, versus full frame and why there's a two different readings or understandings of lenses, then ask below, I'm happy to help out. Okay, scrolling. Love my 85 1.8, says Steve Ock. Yeah, it's a beautiful lens. And it, the nice thing about the 85 F 1.8, it's sharp, it's not radically expensive, it's smallish, it's, it's, um, We'll just say it has a low f-stop number. We call that wide open or a fast lens. And really, it is. Um, if you if you had to have an 85 millimeter focal length range, uh, any other way, it would be in a zoom lens, and that would be a very large, usually a very large lens, and that is a little bit conspicuous if you are traveling, for example, or if you're. You know, it, it's just not something that huge zoom lens is not something that's ideal. And that 85 is quite small relative to the power that it gives you. So Steve Ock, uh, 921, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it. Okay, Nehemiah says, hi Mark, what was your first camera? And were you happy with it? Like its results were, they were satisfying or did you crave for a gear upgrade? So my first camera was um, way back. <laughs> in the film days prior to digital, and it was a Nikon EM. And if there's any uh, old film people online right now, you'll, you'll probably rem remember that camera. It was a, um, it was a pro, it was a consumer version. And uh, I really loved it. It was from my grandfather. He gave it to me to get ready for a trip to Japan uh, very early on in my career. But when digital came around, I think my first digital camera was something called a D70 by Nikon. And then I upgraded to the D2X. And then I upgraded to the Nikon D300 and then the D300S. And then I switched to Canon, had the Canon 5D Mark II, then the Canon 5D Mark III. Then I switched to, Ni uh, to Fujifilm and had the Fujifilm X-T... No, sorry, X100S then the X100T, <laughs> and then the X-Pro2, and then the X-T30, and now I have a Nikon D780. So I've been around the block, and each time I've upgraded because either someone wanted to buy my used camera or I had a specific need. 
And for example, I've been buying cameras lately because I've started working as an author and an editor for a very well-known publishing company. And I'll, uh, I'll, I won't mention this really right now, but um, I have an, a great announcement coming up fairly soon about that. So with regards to your question, I'm always, I'm always happy with my gear, to be honest, because anything that's like five years older, like for this, say, for example, 2015 and to current, they're all amazing. Even the, even the, the cheapest Canon Rebel T7 or whatever is still amazing. So you should never feel left out because you have either old, uh, older gear or it's not professional gear. Um, the only time you're going to upgrade is if you are being held back both artistically and technically by the gear, and then you need to upgrade. So for example, if you're into sports or if you're into weddings, I do feel that you may have to be more conscious of upgrading your gear simply because those are critical genres. Now, I don't do weddings, but I can appreciate the stress that probably comes with wedding photography because if you don't get the shot, you're screwed. <laughs> you're going to be dealing with one very angry mother-in-law and a very angry bride and um, you know, probably a frustrated groom. So you need to have fast equipment that w is reliable and will not fail. And the same with sports photography. Now, when you're getting into things like landscape photography, street photography like I do, travel photography, it's less of an issue, to be honest, because you're slowed, you're, in, you're not as fast, or it's not that you're not as fast, is that the stakes are not as high. And that's why actually I use a, D7, a, a Nikon D780 for my professional work because it's a rock, solid as a rock, it's like a brick, and it's super reliable but it's too big for street photography. So that's why I use Fujifilm for my travel and street. Nehemiah, I don't know if I answered your question. I hope I did. But uh, I really don't want people to go into debt or to buy equipment that they don't need. Uh, maximize, Max out your gear. And then if you have to upgrade, then do so. And don't be afraid of used gear, by the way, everyone. Used gear is fine. Hey, Mark, thank you again for your suggestions. The lens that I have is a kit lens, 24 millimeter goes to f4 max wide aperture so that means i can shoot at f around f4 or f5.6 right i shoot mostly in daytime yes exactly so yeah you're going to be shooting at f4 when you're at your widest and the don't worry about your your camera's actually going to automatically adjust to f5.6 when you zoom in you don't have to worry about that at all all you have to do is just choose your lowest f stop number possible and uh, like i said in the daytime, you can just set it to 5.6, to be honest, and then you'll be have that locked in both wide and zoomed, and you'll be all set. Because you're, interestingly enough, and if anyone doesn't know this, a kit lens, usually, if it's what we call a variable aperture, your zoom, when you're zooming in, your lowest f-stop changes from f4.5, approximately, up to 5.6 when you zoom in, and people don't usually know about this. And if you have a zoom lens that's like the 70 to 200 or 70 to 300 range, it could be anywhere from like uh, the lowest f-stop number is f5.6 and the then it shifts to f6.3 when you zoom in. And this is because it's called a variable aperture zoom, range, zoom lens. Now you can also get fixed or uh, what would you call it? Um, I think it's called fixed aperture zoom lenses. And that would be like a professional zoom lens that is like f2.8 all the way. So for example, a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens that's always at f2.8 regardless of where you zoom it. Further, you can get 70 to 200 zoom lenses that are only at f2.8. And you can also get a fixed that's f4. And I have one of those for my Nikon. It's the f4, what is it? A 24 to 120, I think. And it's always a constant, sorry, a constant, uh, aperture zoom. So that's really good too. They're a bit pricey, um, but the F4 is actually a good deal. Um, it's not as pricey as the F2.8. I'm throwing out a whole load of crazy numbers. And for those of you who do mobile photography, you're probably feeling, you know, move on, Mark, move on. Um, <laughs> however, um, hopefully this is interesting to all you guys. I love all this, this tech geek stuff. 
I am left and right brain 50 on both sides. I'm a tech geek and nerd. I'm also an artist. So I feel like uh, I have a good balance between left and right brain. Augustine Ishikawa, good to see you again. I love cooking desks. Welcome, Avram, welcome. Ola, I have to say goodbye to you guys fairly soon, simply because I'm just chewing up data on my data plan. So please uh, put your questions below really quickly, and I, I just have to, I'm going to burn through them. And Mark, just to let you know, a lot of my friends have already started to follow your channel. Good. And they were telling me they might buy your course, especially Digital Camera Mastery. Well, I appreciate that. And by the way, if anyone wants to have a lot of free resources, my YouTube page is Mark Hemmings Photography School. So just type that in, uh, Mark Hemmings Photography School. I have a whole bunch of videos just for you guys. But if you want a really clearly defined course that logically goes through the whole process of learning about your DSLR or your mirrorless, my courses are at markhemmings.com and you can find them there. Digital Camera Mastery is the first one. And then you, if you want to continue, there's photo shortcuts, there's Lightroom Editing Mastery and iPhone Art Academy and a really interesting brand new course that I'm, I'm very happy to talk about. My friend Kelly Lawson and I, uh, Kelly Lawson mostly, but I helped her with it. And I'm on in that course as well. It's a course on product photography in your home. And if you're interested in product photography, if you're selling products uh, through eBay or you want to get into making money by photographing objects that you sell, or even if you just want to learn about how to photograph objects or still life or anything like that, then uh, there's a new course that you'll see at markhemmings.com. And uh, it's called uh, Product Photography Mastery. And we just finished it. We're really proud of it. Okay. Oh, I uh, have really improved my photography through your videos. Oh, that's good, Ola says. I appreciate that so much. Photo Texture, welcome. Shahir, good to see you. Hi, Mark. I'm Hassan from Nigeria. Welcome, Photo Texture. Photo Connect, welcome, Becky, Lloydify. Uh, hi, Mark. I got a 50 millimeter f1.8 Yongo lens. Yeah, that's that's what I was referring to the other day. And uh, I couldn't remember how to pronounce. That's a Korean company, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yongnu. And I, I know I butchered that pronunciation. Uh, but I really don't think it focuses very accurately. Do you think a 50 millimeter Canon would be better? Possibly, but to be honest, I've never seen a Yong, Yongnu lens. Uh, I've seen them. I physically held them in Tokyo, but I've never really shot with them. So what I'll get you to do, um, Augustin Ishikawa, is do the brick test, brick wall test. So what I want you to do is put your camera on a tripod, uh, photograph straight onto a brick wall or a wall that has intricate wallpaper. I want you to set it to aperture priority, go to F8, go to your lowest ISO possible, and use your five or 10 second timer. Take the picture, and then I want you to put that picture into Lightroom or Photoshop or Photos or whatever you view your photos in your, in your computer. And on your screen, I want you to do what's called pixel peeping. Go to 100% view and look at the sharpness of that brick wall or that, that uh, wallpaper. I want you to look at the center of the picture, make sure it's sharp. I want you to look at the perimeter of the picture and make sure it's sharp. And then on Monday or Tuesday, if you come back on the Q&A, let me know how that happened. Don't ever buy any new camera lenses until you do this lens test. This is the, <laughs> the Mark Hemmings lens test. I invented it. No, it's, I probably didn't. However, if I did invent it, then uh, it's all yours. So use it, everybody. Use this lens test. Um, it's, uh, it's very useful for judging how good your lens is. Now, some ask with this lens test, how close do you have to be to the wall? I would say maybe like um, two meters is fine. I, I don't. It's not really that critical. Now, it's true that the closer you get to that brick wall, and um, you may lose a little bit of quality. But I think if you go for two meters, and for my American friends, uh, what is that, 12 feet? I'm not even sure. Uh, give that a try before you buy a new lens. By the way, the 50 millimeter Canon, regardless of which one is, is, is very good. Okay, everybody, good to see new people. Scout's Kitchen. Have you ever tried shooting Star Trail or the Milky Way? What lens do you recommend for that kind of photography? Quick suggestion, can you shoot one tonight if your place isn't light polluted? Yeah, so I like 35 millimeter lenses for my 
uh, or 50, 50 millimeter or 35. I'll tell you why. And these are prime lenses. The 50 millimeter is great because it's so fast, so cheap, so sharp. And it w works great for Milky Way, but the 35 millimeter lens is also fast, cheap, and sharp. But you can also get some of the landscape into the picture as well as the night sky, for example, a Milky Way. Or, and also, by the way, a lot of um, people who shoot, uh, what are they called, Northern Lights, they can they like the 35 millimeter as well because it's a tough lens. It's, a, it's not too expensive. It's super sharp. And it's super fast, f1.4 or f1.8. And they can get the landscape in, which is really great because you want to see that beautiful landscape when you're up north, when you're getting these these uh, lights, these northern lights in. That's my suggestion. And um, shooting star trails, yeah, 50 or 35 millimeter. And when I'm saying these, I'm saying the equivalent full frame. So, for example, if I suggest to you a 50 millimeter lens, and you actually have a, an APS-C size camera, then you're looking for what we call a 35 millimeter lens. Okay, hope that helped. Okay, um, we'll miss the Q&A tomorrow. By the way, and thank you for reminding me, I'm not going on tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday, it's, it's my family day, my day off, but I will be coming back Monday. Uh, thank you for helping us in every way, and you can like and weather and the data that you are using. Thanks a lot, awesome. Tutanburui. Oh, Monday. Okay. Yeah. So no problem. And Monday, I'll see everyone back. I'm looking forward to it. I'm just waving to uh, all you rogue, rogue coffee. I desperately want uh, to come back to rogue coffee. I miss it. And uh, please, um, it, because yesterday we had great news and I just told this to everybody, but we have uh, great restrictions in our province because we've been doing so well with uh, staying uh, apart from each other and we've been obeying the government uh, and the, uh, with regards to social distancing and we now have a lot of ease. So I'm looking forward to my rogue coffee every morning. Um, Mike, I do have to take off just because uh, I'm burning through my data plan, but um, yes, I do have p food picture tips. Now, Mike Trini 10, this is not I, I don't want to sound sales pitchy. I apologize for this, but uh, I do have a new course on taking food photography. Uh, it's called the Product Photography Mastery, and it's at my website, markhemmings.com. And it's Kelly Lawson's course that I helped her create, and I teach on it as well. And we talk all about food photography in one of the modules. So give that a, a look. However, a really quick uh, throw out just before. Uh, before I say goodbye, is you want to use um, your picture window. You want to use a reflector, and that reflector could be something as simple as a white Bristol board. You want to be at a 45 degree angle with a zoom lens, a long lens. You want to be an aperture priority, f8, and uh, you should be all set. So, <clears throat> okay, one more question here, and then I have to move on. And get my shopping done. I have one more place to go. Hi, Mark. Good to see you again. I think I'm stuck at some level, although I practice every day and review your course. Could you advise how to improve to the next level? Thanks. I'd love to know what you feel is holding you back, and then I can really help you with that. And if uh, GHB, um, I've, I know that you've been on a number of these Q&As. So if we meet again on Monday or Tuesday, I would just love to hear from you uh, where you feel you're struggling, and I will be able to help you. Mike Trini 10, great. Okay, everybody, I do have to say goodbye. There's a few questions that I didn't get to, and I apologize. But um, I have some hungry teenagers home, and they're looking forward to me bringing home a huge car full of food from Costco. So uh, let's uh, check back Monday, same time, and uh, I value all of you. And uh, it's so fun talking to all of you. So have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.